Hello everyone. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the organisers of ProgPAL 2020, as well as my sponsors for funding my PhD. What I'd like to discuss with you today is the work I carried out during the second year of my PhD, where I've been analysing the different structures found in Ediacar and tubular fossils of the Norma group in Namibia, and how they can be used to determine their ecology and affinity. Here, we have an accumulation of biomineralizing Ediacara and tubular fossils called Claudina. The terminal Ediacara saw multiple evolutionary advances, including mortal behaviors and biomineralization. Claudina showed the first evidence of macrofaunal biomineralization at around 550 million years ago in the terminal Ediacara, just before the Cambrian boundary. Claudina are the most well studied of the Ediacaran skeletal taxa due to its widespread distribution and potential index fossil status. Claudina and other similar tubular, skeletal and organic taxa termed claudinomorphs are formed of stacked funnels that lack a transverse cross wall and funnels that flare out forming flanges and an annulated outer wall structure. Claudina has a closed base, but this is not necessarily the case for all claudinomorphs. Claudinomorphs are often found as singular tubes, but dichotomous branching has been observed in few cases of Claudina in China and in Spain. Mutual attachment between Claudina tubes have been noted in Namibia, forming attachments at the base of the tube or cementation of adjacent tubes by cements termed meniscus cements. These features were observed in Namibia in the earliest known metazoan reef complex in the geological record, forming a Claudina supported reef structure. However, Claudina are mostly known to occupy microbial mats and thrombolites. There are two main schools of thought with the affinity of claudinomorphs. The form of branching and the autostructure of claudinomorph tubes have been attributed to Cnidaria. However, the nested funnel morphology and the recent findings from Nevada of a cylindrical internal structure, which is inferred to be a gut, indicates an annelid affinity, showing that the debate is still ongoing. Samples were collected from the Norma group in Namibia which is a sedimentary succession deposited in two subbasins, with the Zari subbasin in the north and the Witzput subbasin in the south, separated by the Osis arch. Samples of in situ bedding planes were collected from two sites in the Zari subbasin, Driedorvlekte marked in red and Omkik marked in orange. Driedorvlekte is the reef site I spoke about previously, and Omkik is an inner ramp position, which is a possible lagoon environment. The two sites are of the same age in the Omkik member, which is dated between 550 million years ago, which is the base of the Norma group, and 547 million years ago, which is dated from an ash bed in the overlying Hoogland member. This is an example of one of the samples collected from Omkik, and if we zoom in, we can see that there are areas that are densely populated, which we have inferred to be microbial mats, with labels 1 and 2 highlighting two different generations of these mats. The intermat areas, such as the areas highlighted by the number three, are sparsely populated and consist of fine-grained micrite. It is inferred that these claudinomorphs are attached to the mat, with examples shown by the red arrows, with some tubes growing out into the intermat areas. These tubes are termed claudinomorphs and not claudina at Omkik, as even though we can see examples of the distinct annulated outer wall structure, these fossils have undergone recrystallization and so any internal structure which are needed to attribute the name Claudina has been destroyed. Another biomineralizing fauna occupies microbial mat communities at Omkik. Namacolathus forms small dense aggregations on the microbial mat itself, highlighted by the black arrows on the right hand image. These are distinct from claudinomorphs due to their goblet shaped morphology. The cup size of Namacolathus in the mats are much smaller compared to the Namacolathus that occupy the intermat areas, as seen in the image in the bottom left. We noticed in the field that some of the tubes seem to look as though that they are branching from the bedding surface. However, evidence of branching can only be proven by the presence of a shared cavity. So, to determine whether these claudinomorphs have a shared cavity, multiple samples underwent serial sectioning where small regular increments of the sample were ground away with an image taken after every section. For this example, shown here, in early stages of serial sectioning, we can see the tube wall highlighted by the red arrow with early isopaca cements growing off either side of the wall. However, with continual serial sectioning, 
we see the disappearance of the parental wall highlighted by the white arrow, indicating a shared cavity between the two tubes. And further serial sectioning shows a continual sharing of this cavity, highlighted by the continuation of the grey isopacus cement from the parental tube to the daughter tube. The continuation of this cement can clearly be seen under cathode luminescence, as this highlights the different cement generations. Using the example of the non-luminescent cement highlighted by the blue arrow, we can see that the cement generation is continuous between the two tubes, suggesting a shared cavity with no evidence of a separating wall. The images taken during serial sectioning were stacked and a 3D model was produced as shown here. This model shows multiple branching from one parent cladinomorph tube, suggesting polysimus branching. Two models were made of this cladinomorph. The blue model on the top left shows segmentation from the outer wall of the tube, while the white model shows the morphology of the open cavities inside the tube. The orange arrows highlight where there is a sharing of an open cavity between the daughter and the parent tubes, with the parent tube being labelled with a white arrow. Green arrows highlight daughter tubes which share a cavity with the parent tube, but this does not necessarily extend throughout the entirety of the daughter tube itself, potentially due to flattening. And on the right we have a reconstruction as to what this polysimus branching cloud in the morph may have looked like. This example from the NARMA group is the first evidence as to this type of branching in cloud inomorphs. Incremental measurements of cloud inomorph tube widths from the bedding surface show that tubes which appear to be branching initially had a fast rate of growth, but remains constant thereafter. This was also the case when taking measurements of the tubes in the 3D model, suggesting that this initial rate of tube inflation is a feature of these cloud inomorphs. Other examples of serial sectioning from samples at Omkuk show attachment between cladinomorph tubes, with the white arrows in the top left image pointing out these attachment sites. It has also highlighted the attachment between cladinomorphs and namacolathus cups, a feature which has not been previously noted. The image highlighted on the left shows the bedding surface view of the attached cladinomorph. However, serial sectioning revealed the attachment occurred due to the formation of early cements between the two taxa, highlighted by the white arrow in the top right hand image. A 3D model was made of this attachment in relation to the whole cloud in a morph tube. These images at the bottom show this and the attachment at different orientations. To further understand the early cements that form these attachment sites, I looked at the cloud inner tubes from Dredor inflector under the petrographic microscope and under cathode luminescence. The cathode luminescent image shows cloudina walls labelled CW having this bright luminescence. ETS1 has this same luminescence as the cloudina wall, suggesting that the cloudina walls and this extratubular structure shared the same diagenetic signature and seems to attach the two tubes together. This predates this bluish cement generation found between the tubes and inside the tubes labelled ETS2. The inclusion-rich calcite cement labelled IC and the late burial calcite spar labelled CS formed after these cements. As ETS1 and ETS2 predate all the inorganic cements, it could be suggested that these are of biological origin and could possibly be extracellular polymeric substances or an organic template which later became calcified, attaching these two tubes together. Here, we have a reconstruction of the ecology of the inferred microbial mats at the OMKIC site from the observations we have made during this study, including the cladinomorph and namacolathus dominated microbial mats, with examples of branching cladinomorph individuals and the attachment between biomineralizing fauna, which has allowed for the formation of a horizontal multi component structure. The evidence of polytomous branching indicates a non bilaterian affinity. It could potentially point to the Cnidarian affinity, particularly hydrozoan, on the basis of features like multiple branching and external budding, and the initial fast rate of growth after branching. However, as previously mentioned, recent findings of an inferred gut in cladinomorphs suggest a bilaterian affinity, particularly an annelid affinity. These findings together could suggest the ediacar and tubular funnel morphology of cladinomorphs is convergent and could represent a group of diverse taxa. The well-preserved microbial mat community has a rigid horizontal structure formed by branching and attaching cladinomorphs. 
It is due to the low energy and possibly lagoonal setting at Omkirk, which has allowed for the preservation for these fine and delicate structures. The polytomous and external budding form of branching presented from this study has not been seen previously in cladinomorphs. This is also the first case of attachment of cladinomorphs and namacolathus which has been presented. The evidence of multiple branching cladinomorphs suggests a non bilaterian affinity which along with other recent findings from Nevada suggests that the cladinomorph morphology is convergent and cladinomorphs could represent a group of diverse taxa. Thank you for tuning in and thanks again to the ProgPile 2020 team.